Okay. First things first, Thomas, how are you? Uh, I'm doing great. Beautiful day here in uh, Amsterdam, so can't complain. Okay, well, uh, I'd like to jump straight into it. Sure. Uh, your previous album you've described as a, a, as a concept record. Did it feel the same for this one? No, I mean, we intentionally decided not to do a concept. Um, mm -hmm. we, you know, with Silverthorn, it was very uh, intense into a certain story. So um, with Haven, we wanted to initially just make 10 songs that had their own sort of spirit and vibe. Mm -hmm. Um, but when we started discussing the topics and everything, we noticed there was this, this red line between all the songs, this sort of revolution, rebellion kind of feeling. Mm -hmm. And um, so even though it's not a concept record, there is this sort of theme that's going through the album that, that uh, we didn't plan initially. When you were writing the record, was there a, a plan of what, what it would sound like or, or what even the subject matter would be? Yeah, we knew we wanted to make uh, something that was a little bit sort of dystopic mm -hmm. based on what, we've, what we kind of feel like is happening today with technology and corporations and, you know, big government and stuff like that. And so that was kind of the direction initially, and then we wanted to have this sort of revolution against all these mm -hmm. things. Um, I'm a big fan of, like, the dystopic future sci-fi stuff. Right. And I remember as a kid watching... Uh, movies like Logan's Run, or even re more, more recently like The Island, stuff like that, and it was kind of cool to include some of those ideas and influences into, into the Haven album. What, was Elysium one of these movies? Then? Because there is a track with Elysium. Yeah, right actually, I've never seen that movie. Okay. I remember when we were thinking about the title Elysium, I kind of googled it and just mm -hmm. kind of, and I saw I think it was Matt Damon or somebody was in the movie, right. but. I haven't seen that movie, but I gotta check it out now because I'll probably get asked that a few times. Okay. Uh, well, but do you know what kind of uh, sparked this this interest in in this particular topic? Was there uh, a, an incident in particular that that kind of caught your eye? Or? Uh, actually, you know, we, it's just something we kind of notice as as technology keeps growing, and mm -hmm. you know, um, everybody's sort of lost in their mobile phones, and you just sort of see this slow disconnect mm -hmm. between people being social and just relying on this technology and I mean it's it's just every day you see it it's good it's getting worse and worse and, um, and at least for, for me in the States I see a lot of teenagers and they're just basically glued to their phone and it's almost becoming their second brain in a way um, so that kind of sparked that I that whole idea and then um, you know I was talking to the guys about this idea I wanted to have to make it everything a little bit more futuristic in terms of the imagery and the live show, the videos and stuff like that. So all of those elements kind of came in and worked together. What was the first song that you wrote after kind of coming up with that idea? Um, probably Fallen Star and End of Innocence. Those two we kind of wrote, we started working on together uh, first. I remember when I, I flew to Germany to work with Oliver on the, um, some of the initial songs. And those, I think, were the first two we started really uh, kicking on. And, and then, you know, we had some different ideas and we're like, yeah, I want to focus on this song right now and build on it. And so those were probably the first two. Would you start out with the music generally? Or the, for, for instance, let's take yeah. End of Innocence. Uh, did the lyrics come first or was it? Uh... Definitely the music, okay. yeah. I mean, it kind of started out with that, that opening riff. Mm. Um, we actually had this idea, I was thinking about the title End of Innocence was initially kind of based on the idea of these, you know, these poor boys that work in the Catholic Church and are abused. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of opened it up with this, this boys choir. And that was the, the original idea for, for End of Innocence. Um, but we, you know, we had that opening riff with the heavy symphonic backings and then that was kind of how that song sort of grew and the genesis for the rest of it we started building it from there and then you earlier you mentioned those uh, dystopian sci-fi movies would you when you watch them would you listen to the sounds the, to the music that, that the score oh yeah definitely and then in that sense did, did you feel that it kind of had an influence on the album not particular movies but mm -hmm. the, the vibe that they created uh in some some parts of the album Yes, but in general, Haven is still a symphonic metal album. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's still based on the on classical roots, and 
we did add some industrial elements with here and there throughout the record um, but so no we didn't really uh, go for like the pure sci-fi style style right. uh, songwriting but uh, there's a couple of parts where there's some kind of eerie sort of things like that because uh, I, I went through the entire uh, record and listening to it it did at some points as you say it mm -hmm. had some cinematic quality so right do you do you have pictures in your mind when you write or play the music um sure i mean in the, in the whole cinematic movie score thing uh, is something we've been doing for for mm -hmm. a while too i mean it's not super original a lot of bands do that but we like to do it with a, a, a mixture of proper classical and um and to build around the story you know so um yeah i think I, i can't remember the exact song because i've been so deep into the record but i remember there was a couple of parts where there's almost like this uh eerie kind of uh vocals and and keyboard parts that are kind of going throughout one of the songs and, and well you say this is kind of something you did in previous records as well so how do you keep it fresh in a sense how do you keep building on what you've already done it's actually not that hard because we you know even right now the album's been done about a month mm. there's always new experiences things that have happened every day uh, I could be walking down the street and and go by a Turkish cafe and hear some kind of cool music that sparks this idea you know so we always try to uh, add new elements to what we do with each record and that's what the fans expect um, it makes us you know having fresh ideas helps us as well um, at the same time it's always crucial to keep the sound the Camelot sound the mel melodies that the fans expect um, so it's it's uh, for us is a lot of fun to be able to do that and have that those those different dynamics within the record and uh, the contrast between heavy and light and building in romance with different things uh, different uh, subjects Well, because I agree that the, the, the record is definitely uh, quite diverse in, in terms of its song. So is that something where if you're working on a song and you kind of notice that it's gravitating towards the sound or, or something of another song, do you kind of take a step back then or, or do you just see where it goes? A lot of songs will, will actually have taken and there's so many parts to it. Uh, and it, it I'll, you know, I'll say, okay, I want to cut this and cut this, and and bring it in. You know, um, where we don't do that, like for example, on Prodigal Son on the last record, then we build this bigger song out of it. Right. You know, but uh, it's it's easy to kind of get lost in the songwriting process and keep going and go this way and that right. way, but you know, you have to kind of uh, rail it in and make sure that you have a cohesive song at the end of the day. 